Today's topic, today's topic, let's talk about the story of Noah and the flood. Uh, so before you move on, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. This is the Open Bear TV. Um, as you receive every morning your daily devotion. And so this time we are going to add, um, I don't know how many times I'm going to be doing this, but I'm going to start doing some of the little Bible verses or Bible stories that people actually uh, heard. So, so, but today we're going to talk about the story of Noah. So, recently I made a video on, um, I made a video, it was about the a song that the LGBTQ people made about um, converting your children and um, somebody commented and I'm gonna put the video in the card and somebody commented and you know we had a great conversation and uh, and that person brought up the story of Noah saying that it is a false story or that is not true and of course i'm like well, i mean is it, nobody acts no, um, god doesn't ask anyone to believe in what he has done or who he is so if you choose not to believe in the, in the, in the story of noah you can do that um but I, of course i explained to him um if the Bible were to give every single account of everything that happens, nobody would ever be able to carry the Bible. So when God only gives you what what is on the Bible, it's because that's all that you need to know. Yeah, He could give you every details, every single detail, but that wouldn't help you at all, because of course He He also wants you to exercise your um, faith in him and so but that's and then that's why now i'm making that video on the story of noah so let's definitely jump into the story of noah real quick because um there are certain things that um that's why i don't really believe i don't really like watching movies about bible stories because they will add now first of all satan controls the uh, the entertainment industry so satan will never give you the true story he will always pervert it some way and so and we'll see what i'm talking about actually so let's jump right into the story of noah and um we're not going to look at everything but let's actually jump in to that story right now so let's go okay so right now we are in genesis chapter 6 so interesting the title is called the wickedness of men and funny thing is the funny thing about that one is as you guys should see the title which is the wickedness of men we are also living in a wicked time actually it's always been wicked yet we have not reached the wickedness of the time of noah so funny um uh, fun facts um the whatever happened in the story of noah only happened one time and uh, it will never happen again because god did say what he will do next time and the next time that something like that will happen it will be at jesus second coming and third coming so interestingly enough people people that will be lost will be lost the almost the exact same way as in the time of noah okay so 
just to throw that out there. Now, let's go back to the to the story of Noah. Let's actually um, begin and read. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and many and daughters and were and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God, meaning the children that worship God, like human beings, saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. They chose. So that simply means, now some people actually read that part and think that the angels came down and had sex with women. No. The sons of, at that moment, there were two children, mainly. It was Seth descended and Cain descended. Because remember, Cain killed Abel. And so, the descendant of Cain and the descendant of Seth were the mostly populating the earth. So, one of them were was a worshiper of God, which is Seth descendant. And Cain's descendant were just basically, I want to do everything I want to do whatever I want to do, which is Satan's theme, do what thou wilt. So, those two are the ones. Now, um, next it says that, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for he is also flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in, to, came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare them children, the same became mighty men, which were men of old, men of renown. So, a lot of people will say that the Bible actually is not true, but the Bible says that there were giants on the earth. And I don't know how many times people have found giants as they go excavating. So, maybe what that talk about the Bible is, is not true. is because they chose, they, I mean, Bible says that many people, they chose to lie or they chose to believe the lie. So, God will leave them to their own deception because they didn't have the love for the truth. So, the Bible speaks about behemoth, which is dinosaurs, and kind of funny, dinosaurs, even now, they excavated some dinosaurs' bones, and they still got blood, so that means they were not killed by fire, you know, so, <laughs> something to just keep in mind, as you criticize the Bible, also, Go and find out what, if there's anything better that is being given. But let's move on. Verse number five. And God saw the wicked that the wickedness of men was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made men on earth on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy men whom I have created from the face of the earth, both men and beasts, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Funny. Um, if I were to ask people nowadays if there is a lot of wickedness on this earth, I don't think anyone would say no. But here is what people, this is what Satan has done to people, actually. Um, because remember, the father the father of wickedness is Satan. So, which, and, and, and people might be like, whoa, didn't God create Satan? No. God created Lucifer. Lucifer actually was a, an angel, which means light bearer. He was carrying light. Lucifer had a freedom of choice. He had a free will, just like you and I. So God created every all his creatures that they can choose to love him, 
choose to obey him or choose to rebel against him. He didn't make them become a robot because that would not be love. So Lucifer as an angel, funny thing, Lucifer is right after God. So the Godhead and then Lucifer is the first, the highest angel. Yeah, so think about that. Think about like your, your parents and then you are the first child. That's Lucifer right here. So Lucifer had great power in heaven and the angels always um, liked him. And they, of course, they obeyed him. And when he says to them, okay, go do this and go do that, they would go. Now, with that power, Lucifer did, the only thing Lucifer didn't like was the fact that Jesus was higher than him. But Jesus was the one that created Lucifer. So, of course, he would be higher than him. And the whole controversy is about Lucifer versus Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus Christ came on this earth. So, now, they might say that, yes, Jesus, um, God created uh, the, the devil. No. Lu Satan, or Lucifer, made the devil out of himself. Remember, he has a choice. He can choose to, to obey God, or he can choose to be whoever he wants to be. That's his choice. So, the same way, when you actually have children, if you have children, um, you of course you will try to you will try to teach them the right thing to do but at the end of the day if they choose to do what is wrong there's nothing you can do about it because when they live in your house and they are doing suppose what is wrong according to what you have trying to, to teach them you think they are doing the right thing and when they actually leave the house as they, as as they go as they get older they leave the house they can turn into a completely different person doing the exact opposite of what you have taught them why because they have a free will so the same for the story of noah people on this earth they had a choice of doing the right thing or the wrong thing and they chose the wrong thing so, it is what it is. And of course, they might be like, well, um, the, one that the all, all other thing is, if you choose to do the wrong thing, there is consequences. If you do the right thing, there's also consequences. So, whatever you do, there is a result that is attached to it, whether it be good or evil. In this case right here, in this case right here, God said in verse number five, their imagination, the imagin the imagination of the of the of the thought of the of, the, of his heart was evil continually. So funny. There is nothing good that they wanted to do. There's not imagine in today's age, some people wake up every single day. The only thing they want to do is um, talk trash about other people or they want to break into a, a somebody's house or they want to kill somebody or they want to uh, they want to bang someone's wife or someone's husband or think of or they want to lie to people think of what we are doing nowadays that is so different than Noah's time. There are some things that we are doing, like, okay, even right now, some people just get into an area and start blowing up that area. They just start bombing or throwing grenades or just killing anyone on the street. Think of anything that you can think of that is evil people are doing and then just not multiply it, make it turn into a factorial. That's back in the time of Noah. Every single day, people were only thinking evil. 
the day we become that, I can guarantee you, is the day we will see what it meant to be in the time of Noah. So far, we still got some little, some people with good conscience. And of course, we got some evil people as well. Um, but <sighs> you, you wouldn't believe that only one family at that time was doing the right thing. Out of every single people. Let's keep on reading. Let's keep on reading. Let's keep on reading. Um, so God said, you know what? I'm going to destroy men on this earth because of the evil that they are doing. And here's the funny part that I hate when people do. You see what people actually do as well? Let me put it that way for you guys. Um, when evil are being done, evil is being done on this earth. Let's see. A great example. 9-11. People were saying, but where was God? Right? Where was God? I, even, I think even that there, there was a book written about it. So what what people actually do um, when it comes to those areas is that um, they they don't like the idea um, they don't like the idea of being punished. All right, um, they don't like the idea of being punished. Because they want to have their their cake and eat it too. So yeah, when the 9-11 thing happened, when, when, when that thing happened, it, people were asking, where was God? Right? Why? Because... They would. They wanted God to prevent that to happen. They wanted. Actually, somebody even wrote a book about it. Interesting. Somebody wrote a book about it. Let's see if I can actually um, pull it. Pull this book because this is very interesting. Somebody wrote a book about it. So, this is the idea, people. Why do we want God only when you want it to benefit you? So, let's see. Here it is. A scientist asked a Ground Zero pastor, Where was God on nine, on September 11? It's written by John Morgan and the Reverend Frank Gear, where was God? But let me tell you what they're not gonna do. Let me tell you what they're not gonna do. What they're not gonna do is when God does intervene to evil, they are not gonna give God credit for doing the right thing. They're gonna say that God is an evil God because He punished people. So the Bible says, the Bible says that, the Bible says that in verse number seven, verse number six, verse number five, and verse number six, that the wickedness of men was great, that every imagination of the thought of his heart was evil continually. But yet, they say God is evil for destroying. All those people that were doing evil. Do you see the hypocrisy? But then, when 9-11 happened, they're like, where is God? Or where was God? So, why would God prevent that if he, if when he actually destroys them? Let's say God had, destroys, had destroyed those airplanes with the people. I don't, I don't know if they have people in it or not. Let's say God, but let's let's assume that they had people in them. Let's say God had decided to destroy those two airplanes. 
would people say God where was God as well? Or would he would they say God was evil for destroying those airplanes before they hit the World Trade Center? Hmm? Think about that. Think about that. So the moral of the, of the story is if God knows what is best and never made a mistake, then you can sure you can be sure that number one, whatever happened at nine eleven, that he didn't do anything was the right thing to do. Yeah, you can talk and say he is he is um evil for not destroying the evil people. But then when he destroys the evil people, then you call him evil for doing that as well. Same way, people ask questions about, well, why would God destroy the Canaanite? Well, the Canaanite were actually doing children's sacrifice, which is an abomination. So why would God not do anything on that? But they say that he is evil for killing all those Canaanites. And he said that he also said that he is evil for killing all those Egyptians in the Red Sea. But the thing is, those people that are saying that it is Satan who was speaking through them. Because Satan's purpose is just to misrepresent God's image. That's it. That's it. So, the, uh, fun, man, interestingly enough, I'm not going to go all the way through right now because there's a lot to talk about in this story. But next time we, next time we come, next time we come, we're going to talk about those other verses. Verse number, what? Verse number 8, verse number 9, verse number 11. I think we're going to talk about those only. But, um, yeah, so far, uh, I want you guys to remember this. I want you guys to remember this, that um, whatever God does is the best thing to do that he did. Um, if he killed this, uh, if he, if he let those people with the airplanes actually get into the building, then that was the right thing to do. Yeah. Because he knew what's best. Now, people will always say, Oh, so you think that was a good thing to let little people die? Um, yeah. Because people don't want to hear. Man. It's like people will always find a way to excuse their bad behavior and then blame it on God whenever he does what he does what he needs to do. So whatever God does, he is still wrong, basically. And of course, people like this, I can assure you, they are also the ones doing the evil things that God is talking about. People that do evil don't like to be punished for their evil act. If you think I'm lying, go work in a school system. Go work in the school system and see how children are acting right nowadays. When they do something wrong and you try to correct them, see how they see what their behavior is. And then you understand. So, guys, today we, we just looked at the first part of Genesis chapter 6, Noah's, Noah's um, story. There's a lot more to learn. But I think I'm going to start doing that now. Uh, once in a while, I'm going to start talking about like, some of the stories in the Bible. So people can actually have a better understanding of what's really going on. And I will do my best to compare it to our time. So we can see if we are doing anything better than what they did back then. Anyway, guys, this was the Open Veil CV. Don't forget to, of course like and subscribe to this channel and of course if you have bible um, bible questions you can always put them on the comment um this story 
I'm doing right now is because I had a great conversation with a person who commented on my video and uh, so I'm gonna finish that story but if you have a question on the Bible feel free to put it on the comment maybe that will help some atheist oh I mean there's no there's no atheist basically because to be an atheist is like to say that God does not exist but you know since you're not everywhere at the same time then you're not really you're like an agnostic not really an atheist so maybe that will help some atheists or agno some atheists agno or, uh, out there you know i don't have that much faith to be an atheist so and then maybe they might understand um something that they never seen before and hopefully they give their life to god you never know so um that's it for today guys uh, I'm gonna try to keep it at most 30 minutes long so that's gonna be the goal I will guys, I hope to see you guys again until then I will see you guys another time bye for now